Hi, Cancer. Welcome to your December 2017 astral update. It's Raina here. And in December, Cancer people may be very businesslike because you have a lot of energy in the sixth house, which deals with work, your work a day world. Whether it's your office environment, if you work outside of the home, or whether it's your daily schedule, if you work from home and have to get certain things done and the schedule becomes even more important. So the month begins with the sun in this sector and the sun can bring creative energy and ideas and just emphasis in this environment and make you more like a Virgo person because Vir Virgo rules the sixth house. And you can be just, and this happens every December when the sun is in Sagittarius. So while other people are busy celebrating, you may be busy organizing. Venus enters the sixth house on the first of the month. So you may be thinking, Cancer, about your figure, about how you look, and you may be wondering whether or not you should indulge in some of the typical holiday treats that are being offered at different parties and things like that. You definitely want to beautify yourself. There may be some situation at work where you feel a sense of harmony restored. And also Venus can bring money with her. So that could affect your bottom line when it comes to your uh, work and what you get as compensation. On Christmas Day, the sun goes into your seventh house of committed partnerships. Now, this could ha be some extension of the sixth house energy where you are making those connections with clients, but it's possible, especially since it begins on the 25th, that this is something to do with a spouse. And if you are on the rocks with a spouse, there may be some kind of uh, reconciliation. Mercury is retrograding in the sixth house. And not the seventh house, but the sixth house. But any time that Mercury retrogrades, you still may hear back from somebody from your past. And in your case, there may be some issue at work that needs to be uh, really ironed out. I think with Venus being in this house, it's going to kind of modify any problems that could possibly arise during this time. Mercury goes direct on the 22nd, and this is like a few days before Venus goes into that seventh house. So uh, <laughs> I just thought of something. I don't know if this is possibly true for anybody, but if you were having an affair in the workplace and you stopped it and then you're, you talk to that person again, maybe you were like deciding between your partner your, your husband or wife and somebody at work and you start talking to them again and then you come to a decision right before Christmas that brings you peace. And chances are it will be that you favor your spouse over somebody else from the workplace. On the same day that Mercury goes retrograde on December 3rd, there's a full moon in Gemini. And this is in the opposite house. This is in the 12th house. So a full moon in the 12th house can bring secrets. Um, so that could be related to that Mercury retrograde in the sixth house. You may get sloppy and your affair is discovered, your workplace affair. Maybe it's discovered by your partner, but maybe it's discovered by people in the office. And... Um, yeah, I should have like made the connection because Venus entered that sector on the first of the month. So it could be talking about something hot and heavy romantically. But but definitely with full moons in the 12th house, something could get exposed. Um, it could be that you have a very vivid dream that really tells you something about your circumstance that can guide you in some way. The 12th house can be uh, connected to past lives. It can be connected to anything related to the spiritual dimension, to 
addiction. So this is a good time of letting go of addictions with um, the full moon in the 12th house. You know, full moons are times to let go of what doesn't serve you. On the 9th, Mars goes into Scorpio, which is nice for you because Scorpio is a fellow water sign. This is your fifth house of romance, you guys. So um, there may be, talk about hot and heavy. Uh, this could be th the sexual situation happening. So you may be attracted to someone and then the libido kicks in and that becomes um, part of what is happening. The fifth house is also the house of creativity. So you may if you're um, a cancer person who is an artist, you may be consumed by a pro project that you're doing and you're just working nonstop on it. On the 18th of the month, there's a new moon in Sagittarius. Again, that's your sixth house. It could have something to do with a health regimen that you've started that you want to, to do to improve your looks, to improve your health. And again, you have the tail end of Saturn in Sagittarius. I mean, this is really a pivotal time around that new moon. I, and I just realized this today because I was thinking about the galactic center. And I actually don't focus much on the esoteric um, transits like some of the the other um, things that can come up. But some, I had watched another uh, video about this from another astrologer, and I knew that the galactic center was at 27 degrees of Sagittarius. I already knew that. I didn't really know what significance it held. And in this kind of thing, like when I realized today, doing another one of these readings, that the new moon in Sagittarius on the 18th is going to be at 26 degrees of Sagittarius. That to me is very significant because it's, it's a conjunction with the galactic center. I had heard in one of the other videos um, that Saturn was making a conjunction to the galactic center at the beginning of the month and even in late uh, November. And Saturn is this uh, energy that brings order, discipline to your life. The galactic center, and also brings things into manifestation on the physical le level. And the galactic center is kind of like, I guess it's like the womb of the material world from what I gather. I hope that I'm correct about that. And I'm not spreading, um, you know, misinformation. But that was what I sussed out from that. And uh, so if that's the case, that would mean that with you, with well, with all of us, um, having this new moon in Sagittarius in a conjunction with the galactic center, that all of the things that Sagittarius represents can really, um, we can really manifest these things at the most basic level, you know, it's like, talk about planting a seed, uh, which new moons are all about. If you're looking at it from the galactic center, the center of um, our universe, um, the, the womb of our universe, it's really, you know, they mentioned zero point and that that's like wiping clean anything that has come before. So for you, this is sixth house stuff. Um, Definitely, if you have had, had any health challenges, cancer, and you may well have found this out with Saturn in the sector, Saturn uh, tends to bring things uh, to people's attention because it, it kind of strips everything away from it. So um, any kind of um, excess and in, you know, the sixth house can be diet. So you may have realized in the last few years, Cancer, that you can't get away with some of the things you used to get away with eating. And with this new moon, you may even really reprogram your body and, um, and, and reprogram your habits 
that make you productive because this is the workhouse. So um, just keep that in mind, even if it seems like kind of abstract. And the very next day, almost as if on cue, Saturn goes into Capricorn, the 19th. And this is in your seventh house of committed partnership. Now, Saturn's influence in the seventh house can be challenging if your relationship is on shaky ground. I'm not going to lie to you. And you already have Pluto in the sector. So it's not a trip to the beach to have these two uh, planets there if you are someone who is um, trying to skate by in your relationship, in your primary relationship. Um, but Saturn can make a relationship stronger and you can realize why you committed, why you are committed to this person. And um, it may strip away all distractions. Maybe you have to really be one-on-one -on -one with this person and see them, appreciate them, and decide whether or not you're going to stay together or release the other person to find the love of their life. But it's almost like I feel like for cancer individuals that you know how sometimes relationships get tested because of extreme circumstances in their lives in general that have nothing to do with the actual relationship. Examples would be something happening with their children. And, uh, you know, the extreme example is severe illness and even death of a child, which is just too horrific to contemplate. But it does happen. And people either stay together or they just can't handle the relationship anymore because it, it just uh, brings out too many bad memories. Then there are the people who experience um, work kinds of challenges, you know, career challenges, and it puts strain on the other person, it puts strain on the finances. So the point I'm trying to make is that it may be just situational and you can get over it. But um, what's nice about it is if you survive, you can buy a t-shirt that says I survived Saturn in my seventh house. And uh, I bought the t-shirt. <laughs> And, and you, you really will emerge from that transit, which is only once in 30 years, a lot stronger. And I don't know exactly when it's going to leave your seventh house. I'm assuming it's going to be around 2020. But uh, yeah, so there's that. And um, the sun goes there a couple of days after that. But uh, I, yeah, the sun goes there a couple of days after. So you have Saturn, the sun, and then Venus on, on the 25th of December in that seventh house, like a cherry on top of the uh, bowl of ice cream. Okay. So it is going to all's well that ends well, and your relationship is going to have a revitalization on some level. So whether that lasts or not, we shall see. But it should be a very nice romantic Christmas Day or 25th if you don't celebrate Christmas Day. Okay, that's what I have for you, Cancer. And if you would like a private reading, um, even with astrology, these are general. And uh, your degree of sun or rising certainly matters in terms of all of these uh, timing issues. So I do have... Um, all of my readings off 20% uh, through the end of December of 2017. And you can follow the link below for that. And um, the natal chart interpretation is the one that is pure astrology dealing with um, your, if you've never had one before, dealing with your blueprint in this incarnation in terms of uh, your talents and your patterns, uh, positive or otherwise, and also looking at different areas of your life and when the hot spots are for the next 12 months. Okay, well, have a great time in December and take care. Bye.